Hi there, welcome to Pacific Coast Auto. My name is Derek Weldon and this is the channel where we review the cars we buy from auction here in Japan. This one here is a 1983 Toyota Corolla 11 GT Apex, the famous AE86. And what makes this one special is it is probably the best one that we've ever exported. It has 48,000 original kilometers, which is extremely low for the 86. And I don't know what the last owner was thinking because this car is so much fun to drive that you just can't help but drive it. And so I don't know what's going on. I don't know how they could manage to do just 48,000 kilometers in 34 years. The 86s are common here in Japan, very common, and you can still buy them fairly easily. But the problem is prices have gone up like crazy and the conditions are all really bad. But this one is as close to perfect as I've ever seen. So the engine here, you can see that it's running a little bit rough. Probably the vehicle hasn't been driven very much. It might need a little bit of a refresh for the engine, maybe spark plugs, wires, distributor, and get some good quality gas in there. With a car with 48,000 kilometers, we don't know if they've even gone through an entire tank in the last two years. So we have an aftermarket air filter on here, aftermarket strut tower bar, aftermarket pillow top mounts on the suspension to give you a little bit more camber. We have a grounding kit, which is weird. I don't know why people like those. Okay, the AC doesn't seem to work, but it does have AC, automatic AC. Has an aftermarket hood. I'm gonna close this now. And I'm gonna turn the engine off. Look, the lovely digital gauge. So this one's a 1983 model, which makes this the first year that this car was ever made. And so if you're looking for a car that's, uh, you know, low mileage, collector's car kind of condition, uh, this would be a candidate for it, but it's not exactly the kind of car that's going to hold up for a collector because it does have a wide body kit on it. Now the body all the way around is pretty much perfect. The interior is very close to perfect, but has had some parts stripped out of it. So let's go over the auction sheet. This is the inspection sheet from the auction here in Japan. So in 1983, Corolla 11 GT Apex, they made two versions of this, the early model, which is called the Zenki, and the late model, which is called the Koki version. This is a Zenki model and has all the matching Zenki pieces for it. And so very cool, except for one thing, really weird. This mirror appears to be a late model mirror because it's a mismatching on this side and the other side. Okay, so let's go over the condition here. It has been color changed to white, black, two-tone. It doesn't say what the original paint color was, but I'm guessing it was a silver because the engine bay is gray and silver was a very common color for the early models only, silver and black two-tone. Okay, original five-speed transmission comes with AC, 40,000. Uh, the kilometers in the car are in the 40,000s is what this means. It has bucket seats, which are not original. It has a roll cage in the car, front and rear strut tower bar. Okay, so the fuel pump and the filter <coughs> and the plug cords have been uh, replaced. Original digital gauge set in the car. So they moved over to analog uh, very shortly after the car started. I think 85 they changed over to analog. And um, I think for these early models, you could get either analog or digital. Uh, not 100% sure on that. Okay, so report here, audio has been removed out of the car, aftermarket uh, steering wheel has peeling, it's really not that bad. Interior one part dirty and faded, and that's really not that bad. Undersized surface rust, and this is the cleanest car in terms of rust I think I've seen for an AE86. Fuel tank is dented and scratched, aftermarket suspension, front fenders, wheels scratched, they're long champ wheels. Rear wide fenders have been put on and then blended into the body. And there's no cracking around where it's blended in. My only complaint is that the tires don't come out far enough, but that's an easy fix. Get some, uh, well, there already are spacers on here, so you'll need a, a wheel with less offset. But the fenders are not that subtle. It's actually quite wide. This kind of thing might be hard to see in the video. And then the back trunk uh, has the aftermarket spoiler on it. And then this aftermarket spoiler, like the fenders, was probably installed at the same time because it's been blended right into the body with body filler. And uh, it's the actual metal 
back, which is pretty uncommon um, to have that metal back with a blended in spoiler because they sell a very popular kit that comes with the entire back hatch with a spoiler already in it. And that's very common to see on cars here. This one, real metal hatch, very common piece to rust, but no rust on it and no rust underneath here or up here or in the door jams or really on the underside anywhere or the sills. So super lovely. Okay, what did I miss here? Uh, aftermarket air filter and exhaust on the car. And then here it says trim in the interior, one part, and the rear seats have been removed. Exterior has some paint wave, which honestly is not that bad. I'm gonna go over here because this side's darker and a little bit easier to see any wave. So it looks like the paint job was a nice high quality one, like two to three times more expensive than a cheap paint job. I see a lot of cars with paint jobs that are subpar. This one is excellently done. And so very good on that. Okay, so what else do we got here? So the front cross member, rear panel and the rear floor have corrosion repair marks. I can find the corrosion repair mark on the rear panel. I couldn't find it on the front cross member at all. And so I don't know what's going on with that one. And then in the back, so the rear panel, let's see if we can see up here, maybe not. So it's between the fuel tank here and the back, the metal underneath there has a repair mark to it. It's been uh, welded in new metal. It's not grinded down in body filler style. And so they did it properly and it's going to last for a good long time. It doesn't look like there's any sort of corrosion coming up around where the welds are either. It looks really good. And this is the front, uh, the rear floor has corrosion hole. Now you can't see this from the bottom because the fuel tank is under the rear floor, but you can see it if you go into the trunk and it's underneath the spare tire and it's very small. The hole is about one millimeter. And then if you get the rust away from that, it'll grow a little bit, but as far as rear floor holes go, very mild. I'm gonna flip this carpet up, bonus plastic. So if you look down here, no corrosion problems anywhere. Inside the pockets, all good. And underneath the wide body seems to be good in everywhere that I can see. That is something that you want to be careful of because some people will put a wide body on because there's lots of corrosion around there. That doesn't seem to be the case on this one. So you see a little bit of surface rusting in there. The hole is right there. Can you see the light come through? And so for anyone who has ever owned an 8.6 or has spent time around them, that doesn't qualify as a hole in the floor. Usually they're at least that big. And so that's a thumbs up. Okay, just put this carpet back in. This color is only available on the early models, um, this color of carpet. And they have, this one here is weird. This carpet attaches to the back of the rear seats. I guess they kept it in there. You can see how it kind of splits there in the middle. Each one of these flaps goes onto one of the back seats. And then the back seats have been removed. We have strut tower bar here, which has been attached to the rear suspension. And we still have the original speaker pods in here and the rear liners, which have had holes cut in them to fit the uh, roll cage. Okay, as I said, Super clean up here. That's one of the places that you're going to want to check first off. They rust big time there. They tend to rust a lot in the uh, this section here where the two pieces meet. There's one on each side. No rust there and nothing under here, nothing up there and only a tiny bit up here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Okay, close. Close it up. So that is the auction sheet there. And let me just remind you, 48,548 original kilometers, never been changed, never been altered. That's insane. Okay, so let's, oh, something to mention here. I don't want to forget this. This trim piece is missing on the top here, but it came with a replacement that's a used part, but in really good condition. Uh, I, I can't put it on myself because these clips are put in with putty and I don't want to mess around with that. So uh, we can either ship that piece to you or we can send it to a shop to get that put on. Okay, so the car had uh, current registration very close. It was uh, expired in 2007, de 17 December, so in two months, but uh, the plate was taken off prior to selling it at the auction. And so it didn't have current registration. The car looks amazing. This is 
the way that a lot of people want their 8.6 to look. So there's two kinds of people in the world. There's people who want their 8.6s to look factory normal, and they're probably the minority. And there's people that want their car to look clean and nice. And I guess a third group would be heavily modified. I have to say I'm not a big fan of the heavily modified 8.6 anymore. I think I was before it became such a rare car, but these days it's so hard to find one of these in good condition. So this one is kind of in between the heavily modified look and the clean and tasteful look. And I would say that it borders uh, more on the side or goes more on the side of the uh, clean look to it. I think that the widened fenders are not too in your face. There's a vent here you can see right after the front wheels. I like the wheel choice. I like the Panda paint job. You see a lot of people going to the aftermarket Panda and they're not getting the lines correct, especially where it comes around the wheels. This one looks like it's been well done. What a good looking car. I just love this so much. Now we had two of them in Canada. They were both owned by my wife, but we both mutually drove them. And we had both late model ones. Really nice to see these early model ones. They get me more excited than the later ones. So let's go to the interior. Oh, here's something weird too. So we had an 86 and an 87. And on the 87, I think, the wiper was sat up like this. And on the 86, it sat down like that. Kind of weird. There were a couple of other weird cha uh, changes like that too. The pieces here are in relatively good shape compared to the average one. And we're not missing any of these trim pieces. They tend to be parts that go missing. And then take a look at that fuel filler. You can see that the wide body has been made uh, I, you know, I don't like it when there's a wide body and then there's no cap on here so that the fuel filler door is sunk in. I think that looks nice. Okay, so this is really extreme, especially to anyone who has seen a lot of 8.6s like I have. I think this is close to like 40 or 50 of them that we have exported, uh, let alone the ones that I've just seen outside of ones we've bought. These door cards are in really good shape. Now they do have a dent here from the roll cage and the roll cage isn't in the front and if I'm ever gonna get a car with a roll cage I don't want one on the front if it's a street car because I don't want the annoyance of stepping around it and I don't want to hit my head on the front bar and this one doesn't have those it's only in the rear and it looks like it's been well installed and well put in I'll just show you that quickly and a lot of the roll cages they take out this lamp because it doesn't quite fit with the roll cage this one's fine and only small holes cut in to the back there. Okay. Steering wheel is aftermarket. The original ones are impossible to find. Okay. And the blue interior with the digital gauge set. Let's show you that again. Very cool. Dashboard has zero cracks in it. That's almost impossible. And then the really nice looking Japanese version here with the automatic AC. I don't even think you could, could get AC in Canada in them because Canada is pretty cold. There's not a lot of need for AC. This one's not cracked. This is right where your elbow goes and these crack really easily. So having a not cracked one's nice. The Recaro seats I think are great. I'm not a big fan of aftermarket seats, especially since the A86 seats are so lovely just to begin with. But these ones are ones that I can live with. And then it's color faded like the auction sheet says right here. Okay, easy to get into the back for basically no reason other than just to look in the back. But everything here looks fine. We got uh, floor carpet is in good condition. Finding a set of seats, I don't know how difficult that would be. You do have uh, provisions here for racing harnesses. So those would have been in the car at some point. Okay, let's hop in. Floor carpets. I have never seen a floor carpet in as good of condition as this for this style of floor carpet. Usually they're taken out and just random rubber mats are put in because they wear out pretty quickly. This one still has the Corolla sign imprinted on the carpet in various places. That is so cool. Then you can see the Corolla sign better up there. This is only my second time even seeing these floor carpets. Cool. Okay. 
And uh, yeah, you get a different color blue for the glove box as the rest. I know colors are a little bit weird to see on the camera compared to real life. And then headliner. Really good. Really clean. So hard to find a good clean headliner for this car. So, that's basically going to be it. I'm going to go drive it in the mountains now. Just kidding, I'm not. <laughs> there aren't very many mountains near where I live. It's like a one hour drive to get to any. And look, I tried not to have this happen, but the shadow has come onto the car now because enough time has gone by. So I'm going to end this one at the side view because the car looks awesome from the side. I have to say, so lucky to have seen this car. It would be only luckier if this could be my own personal car. So very uh, big thumbs up to the owner of this. I'm going to be in my bed crying because it's not my car for the next year and a half. And so send me an email with pictures of it. I'd love to put this on our Facebook page uh, a little bit later on down the road. So if you have any questions, post them in the comment section or you can email us. There's a link to our website uh, in the description to the video. So thank you everybody for watching and have a nice day.